immersive art is appearing everywhere. Colorful exhibitions featuring digital art installations have proven extremely popular with the public. In theory, these exhibitions should allow us to fully sink into the art. So how well do they work in practice? And can they turn us all into art lovers? Here's one example of immersive art made by Turkish-American artist Rafik Anadol. But before we get into his work, let's go over the basics. Immersive art 101. What exactly is it? Immersive comes from the Latin word immersio, which means to plunge into. Many are already familiar with immersion from the gaming world in virtual reality. When executed successfully, you feel like you're right in the middle of the action. Some artists are using some of the same elements, huge digital artworks, sometimes even with sound effects and smells, that offer guests a full sensory experience. Immersive art concepts are flourishing. The international art collective Team Lab broke a Guinness World Record for its hugely successful immersive installations. More than two million visitors came to see it in just one year. Not bad, right? Take a look at their new exhibition. Team Lab Borderless is less of a place you visit and more of a place you experience. The museum in Tokyo, curated by the collective Team Lab, showcases digital art. Instead of standing in front of the works, guests are invited to step inside them. The immersive installation Bubble Universe comes to life as you move around. The physical experience is an expression of the artist's concept and philosophy. People tend to perceive the world as having independent entities which exist independently. With Team Lab Borderless, we want to create an experience through the artworks, where the world is continuous and where the continuity of the world itself is felt as beautiful. This three-dimensional artwork is made up of spheres that generate light according to movements. As a person moves closer to a sphere, the bubble will shine brightly and the light will spread to the nearest bubble, interacting with light started by other movements. As a result of the technology, viewers aren't just observers, they become contributors to the artwork itself. I think that a space where the existence of other people changes the artwork, and that creates some sort of change for you. That reciprocal relationship between you and the artwork and other people can create an experience where people can further feel the sense of continuity. In their Tokyo studio, Team Lab artists are designing new immersive creations. It's a diverse team that likes to experiment with new ways of making art. We Team Labs is a group of this specialists. It, uh, we are like you know, hardware engineers, software engineers, and CG animators, and architects, mathematicians for this, you know, like algorithms, and it's a different type of these programmers, and it's a botanist. We use all these different media, monitors, projectors, LEDs, or robotics, whatever. We try to create some things. Team Lab isn't the only player in the immersive art scene. More and more artists, galleries, and cultural institutions are developing immersive art projects. Like these installations by Japanese photographer Mika Ninagawa. So why does immersive art appeal to so many people? I think today more than ever, we 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 are kind of lazier in a certain way when it comes to art. So we don't want to make that effort of contemplation, of dialogue. And so with the traditional art form, it, it's up to us to go to the artwork. While in this kind of immersive spectacle, it's the artwork that comes to us, that immersed us. Uh, the second reason, which is a more recent reason, I would say, it's, it's, the, it's social media. These works are highly Instagrammable. And also there's a third reason to that, which is also contextual. I think it's COVID because we were so deprived of any sensorial experience of real life experience. Everything happened on a screen, it's all flat. So I think we all needed to get out to experience with our full body. I'm a fan. Immersive art triggers all of your senses. 
which can be exhilarating in an era when it's easy to get stuck staring at your phone. And these striking installations are basically predestined for social media. Speaking of which, does it cheapen the art when it feels like everyone on Instagram has a picture of it? Here's art curator Michael Connor. I see a lot of positives about it. Um, you know, this idea of like taking a picture and putting yourself in it, it's a way of expressing your relationship with that art. But there are critical voices too. Exhibitions that take classic paintings by famous artists and turn them into huge video installations are marketed as immersive experiences. And so are installations like those by Team Lab, which feature newly created immersive works. Do they both count as art? Let's unpack this. Some of these experiences are definitively art. There is no question that it's made by an artist for the purposes of artistic expression and advancing this medium in a new way. Certainly when you're talking about something that's being offered as a commercial experience derived from an older art, artist's work, calling that art was, would be a, a bit more controversial. I mean, this certainly isn't Frida Kahlo's art. <laughs> Can this be considered new art or a mere copy? This immersive exhibition on the life of Frida Kahlo displays almost all of the Mexican painter's works. In a way, they've never been displayed before. Moving, larger than life, and accompanied by traditional music. The visitors to the exhibition in Berlin were impressed. That's the lovely thing about an immersive experience. You just, you're just surrounded by it. And whereas you might go to a gallery and see one picture by her, here you get a taste of, of so many of her works. You see the, you know, the whole catalogue of her work. The technology, the sound, it was all superb. The film worked really well. High performance projectors bring Frida Kahlo's paintings to life on walls five and a half meters tall. The story of her life is told in vivid detail. The quotes are Kahlo's own words, taken from letters and diaries, her family background, her relationship to her husband, the Mexican Revolution, and her health issues. Kahlo explored all of these topics through her art. I'm impressed by her life in this colorful world. You feel like you're right in the middle of it and experiencing the time the way the artist did. Other immersive exhibitions also try to give guests the feeling that they're right in the middle of the work. Curators have used popular works from Renaissance masters. Claude Monet's colorful garden paintings, Gustav Klimt's golden age works, and Vincent van Gogh's iconic paintings. Immersive exhibitions can run in parallel in different locations, but not everyone is so enthusiastic about these new forms of presenting and repackaging art. There's no creation, they just use a name as a label just to attract people for something that is entirely fake. That also disregards and disrespects the artwork of these painters. They were not supposed to be immersive. Obviously, we can't know what Frida Kahlo would have thought about these immersive exhibitions, but some living artists have no qualms about them. In fact, British painter David Hockney worked on turning his own iconic paintings into wall projections for this immersive showcase. No less striking, but far more abstract, is work by artist Rafik Anadal. His use of artificial intelligence has made him a pioneer in the field of media art. The beauty of data is central to the work of media artist Rafik Anadol. His art is exhibited in the world's most influential museums. It's also displayed on building facades and in public spaces. I start imagining data as a pigment. Data for me is not a number. Data is a form of memory, and this memory can take any shape and form. Since 2016, Rafik Anadol has been using algorithms to create monumental data sculptures that constantly change shape. My signature, I guess, aesthetic is the fluid dynamics, and I love water and the, and, and the movement in life. And I believe that if data paint, if one day data becomes a pigment, it won't dry. It feels like a water, always shape shifting. At the World Economic Forum in Davos, Anadol's immersive artwork visualized the biodiversity of the Amazon rainforest. I know my capacity as a human. I will never remember one million image of nature. I will never remember half million flowers of Amazonia. But using AI allows me to go beyond my capacity. Whether it's the biodiversity of the Amazon, brainwaves, or observations collected by the US Space Agency, NASA, 
The data for Rafiq Anadol's art is always chosen with the installation site in mind. For example, this project was created using 45 terabytes of data from the Los Angeles Philharmonic's digital archive. It was projected onto the exterior of the concert hall. Immersive art is also a topic in science. One of the pioneers of so-called neuroaesthetics is Susan Max Salmon from Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine in the United States. Her research focuses on how art impacts our brain. And she has a scientific explanation for all of the hype around immersive art. I think we like immersive art so much because they make us feel good. Um, it brings to um, the forefront all of the sensory systems that we have been wired for and often don't use in our daily lives. So this idea of being able to touch, to smell, to feel, to see, to use the vibration of sound and music to really enliven our bodies and our brains. Sensory experiences activate synapses, which connect different areas of the brain and form new neuronal structures. These small changes influence how we feel, think, and behave. We're learning more and more that our well-being, our flourishing, our physical health, and our growth is highly influenced by the fact that we are wired for the arts. And for a long time, I think we have set that aside and thought that the arts were a nice to have, a luxury, something that you do when you have time. And now what we're finding is that they're as important as nutrition, good sleep, and exercise. The arts are absolutely essential to our well-being. So do you hate it or love it? What's your take on immersive exhibitions? I think they can be a great way to learn more about art and artists. Yes, there's an element of entertainment to them, but maybe that's not such a bad thing. Do you think immersive art is worth the hype? Let us know. Take care and see you next time.